going to talk about today is uh, this alloy, Platinum Plus, and um, uh, our, our agenda is what's happening in the precious metals marketplace. It's a very unusual situation that we have. Uh, a description of the Platinum Plus, how you can get Platinum Plus from, from Argon. We have basically three forms, as you'll see. And then hints and tips for successfully using uh, Platinum Plus. So first, uh, let's talk about uh, what's happening in the commodity marketplace. So I have a, a two graphs here, uh, the palladium price up on top and the platinum price on the bottom. And I have a big blue mark here. Uh, that blue mark is uh, uh, in 2015, the end of 2015. And what happened there was that's when Volkswagen admitted that their diesel engine really was polluting. And it was not as clean as they said it was. It was. And what that touched off is a rise in the price of palladium. But you can see it's a very dramatic at that time. That was just between 2015 and 2018. And a continued decrease in the price of platinum. And the reason for this is that all of the automobiles that were going to that were expected to be using diesel engines were now going to be using gasoline engines and platinum is needed for a diesel engine because a diesel engine produces nitric oxide and platinum takes the nitrous oxide and converts it into uh, harmless nitrogen and oxygen but the palladium in the gasoline engines, because, because of the gasoline engines produce carbon monoxide, will then take that carbon monoxide, turn it into carbon dioxide. And the two cannot be interchanged. So right now, the only metal that can be used in a gasoline engine catalytic converter is palladium. So once they recognize that all these cars are going to need palladium, the price went up. Now, the other issues are here you see the continued plat platinum price and here we uh, I extended out another year or so uh, th they tried to get a little bit of a bull market here but it didn't go very far uh, the gold price uh, as you remember as some of you may remember uh, once the, uh, the government allowed the commodity people to put in exchange traded funds you didn't, have to take, you didn't have to take possession of gold in order to deal with it anymore. So the price go, went, went dramatically high and bounced back a little bit. But it, it, every now and then, they, like, like now, they're trying to uh, get a little bit of a bull market in gold. But it, it hasn't really gone very far price-wise. Palladium, however, here's the start in 2015, and it just went up like a rocket. And it went up even higher. It's 46% higher just this year, since the beginning of, of, of January. And the reason for that rise is the uh, imp imposition of new uh, air quality regulations in both China and Europe. So even if they don't make more cars with regard to what they expect to make, the loading of the palladium, there, there's more palladium required in the catalytic converter. And the biggest issue is that palladium comes from Russia. And no one understands what the, what the reserves of, of uh, Russia is. The reserves are very important because, like last year, we, uh, the industry, not just the dental industry, the auto industry and, and the electronics industry, used a million ounces more of palladium than was taken out of the ground. That's 10% of the, of the volume. That's a significant amount, and it's unsustainable. Uh, if things remain the way they are, they expect an even bigger deficit next year. So knowing how much material Russia has sitting in vaults is very important. But right now, nobody, no, nobody knows that. So the price just keeps going up. So... Why did it go up? Basically, there's no substitute for palladium and gasoline engines. That drives the price up. Poor information, as I said, about Russian stockpiles. Now, it shows a lease rate here. Now, a lease rate you could consider like your credit card uh, rate. And it, it, it's imposed on the companies that are using the palladium. 
So uh, typically, uh, like a lease rate of gold is 1%. And here you can see uh, palladium, it went up to 30%. Uh, it came back down to 15% when Russia put 3 million troy ounces of uh, material in the marketplace. Uh, so th as I said, the run-up this year was due to the new Chinese air quality regulations, and, and I talked about the deficit. Platinum, however, is expected to have a surplus in 2020. So we don't expect that price to go very high. So what's the new reality? The new reality is that we cannot expect the palladium price to go below the price of gold any time in the future. So once it's up there, it, it's 2,700 now, it, it may drop down to 2,000, but it's never going to get below uh, the price of gold. We're never going to see 200, um, unless someone comes along and comes up with a, with a substitute for palladium in, the, in a catalytic converter, uh, it's not going to happen. But what does that mean for us? The dental industry was always a slave to the commodity market, and now it's even more important because now that means that a noble alloy will always be more expensive than a high noble alloy. So the price of gold is going to remain wherever it is, but the price of palladium is going to continue to be higher. And that's a big deal. That's a big deal. That your, your clients have to understand that, and the insurance companies have to understand that. And this is just starting the, 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 this quarter. So palladium alloys are no longer, more econo are, are no longer the more economical choice. And, and uh, uh, that's one of the reasons, that, that's the biggest reason why we developed this alternative material, uh, Platinum Plus. So we're comparing the Platinum Plus to another alloy that we had uh, with uh, palladium. Uh, it, these materials are basically cobalt chrome alloys, but because they have a sufficient amount of noble metals in them, they meet the criteria for the ADA classification of noble. And that's basically what we're looking for. It, it doesn't mean that they're going to react the same way as a palladium-based alloys, like a palladium silver alloy or, or, or a palladium copper alloy, but they, they do meet the classification of noble. Uh, in the case of Platinum Plus, we have zero palladium, and we just have uh, only 20% of platinum, and this other element called ruthenium, uh, which is also part of the platinum group elements. So between the two of them, we're over 25%, and that's, that's what we need for the classification. Now, the alloy itself meets all of the requirements for the FDA, for a CE mark, uh, Health Canada. We, we, we have no problem there. Uh, it, it's, a, it's an excellent material. In fact, the composition and the properties of the material came out a little better than we expected. Uh, the hardness is a little lower uh, than, than our previous material. The strength is higher, but the yield strength is also higher. Not only, not only does it have uh, better, uh, uh, hi uh, higher strength levels, but it also uh, uh, has higher ductility. And that means it's going to be tougher, it's going to be easier to grind, it's going to be uh, uh, better for thin wool castings. The thermal expansion is also lower than what the previous material had, and it, this, this range, 14.3 uh, at 500, uh, works very well for the majority of uh, porcelains in the marketplace. The one porcelain we had an issue with it happens to be the uh, uh, inline uh, from Ivoclar. Uh, and it's not that you can't use it, but you have to follow the Ivoclar instructions to the T. And Ivoclar does not require, uh, does not uh, recommend a full wrap porcelain around a Pontic. And obviously some of the, most of the doctors like that. So it, it's, a, it's a little bit of, a, uh, of an issue. So we'd rather not recommend it. Now the melting range is high. And uh, that's where sometimes we run into some difficulty. But for the most part, it works very, very well. So the material is available in the form of casting ingots if you want to do your own casting. It's in the digital workflow, we can make a casting for you. You send us the file, we print the wax, and we do the casting. And uh, m most efficiently, we, it's, it's uh, available in selective laser melting. So you send us the file. And bingo, uh, uh, the machine prints it out, and it works very well. 
And uh, here again, uh, the powder that uh, is made from this material is very, very clean. And it, it, it has, worked, has worked very, very well. So here's a, here's a cast material. This uh, was one laboratory in town and country that, uh, uh, that did this work. You see it's nice and clean inside. Uh, the castings themselves are, are fairly clean. Now, one of the things that you, uh, we would recommend is uh, you could use the buttons. We would recommend you just cut the thin sprues off because those are going to oxidize the next time you remelt it. But uh, other than that, the button itself can be remelted without any problems. And they have their own uh, bond test for their porcelain. And you can see it, it adhered very, very well. On the SLM, uh, we can go to all 14 units, no problem. And there's no restriction on the number of pontics. The material is very strong. The material is uh, very easy to SLM. And uh, you, can, you can use a variety of different designs without any issues. Uh, if you do a bridge like this, uh, we, we always put a bar uh, uh, on, the, uh, on the bridges that have any, any curvature to them. And uh, on the larger bridges, we would always recommend you keep that bar on there while you fire porcelain. It just is, makes it easier for you. And then uh, prior to glazing, you cut the, you cut the uh, uh, fire off and just put a little glaze there and you'll be fine. Uh, the fits, uh, the, the material is very easy to grind, it's very easy to finish, and the fits are, are excellent. So. Uh, this is what it looks like oxidized, but don't get too excited about the gold. Uh, the gold color you can only get when you live in San Diego, so, because the humidity is low, so that's it. But other than that, the, uh, the oxide itself is, is, is not, not very heavy. Uh, we do require that the material be oxidized under vacuum and then uh, sandblast it. That's one requirement that you, that you do have that you may not have on a, on a palladium silver alloy, for example. Okay. Uh, our, we recommend, uh, as I said, almost any porcelain can be used except for the inline. Uh, this is what Sramco looks like, and if you look at our instructions, we say we have one uh, zirconia, we have one uh, porcelain uh, Sramco, and that's just for uh, our, uh, our our requirements on the regulatory side, that we have one material listed. So. The uh, surfaces of the of the uh, SLM are, are nice and smooth, uh, very easy. There's no uh, uh, there's no contours, there's no porosity, and we also have no discoloration around the margin. Some of the uh, cobalt alloys may, may generate that, but we don't we don't get that on this material, and that's probably uh, and that's that's due to the ruthenium content in the material. So first uh, tip, when you're sprueing, we recommend you do not use a direct sprue. Using indirect sprues is, is better. Uh, using a runner bar and then putting individual units on a runner bar is better than trying to sprue them directly. Uh, again, because of that high melting point, the material is going to solidify fast, and you want to make sure you get more metal in the hot investment. Uh, for investing, you have to use a non-precious alloy water powder ratio, not a palladium silver or a palladium uh, uh, water powder ratio. You want the maximum expansion you can get. Okay. And again, when we talk about comparing it to non-precious, we're not talking about a nickel-based alloy. We're talking about a cobalt-based alloy. Okay. Uh, for torch casting, uh, 17 oxygen, 7 propane is, is the preferred uh, combination. And uh, we know some people have gotten used to some of the palladium alloys and have pumped up the oxygen uh, a lot. And uh, what happens here with this alloy, it just sits there and oxidizes, and it gives you a nice big black lump. So you don't want to do that. You want to uh, keep it in the reducing flame. And um, uh, Marlon's presentation will go a little more detailed into, uh, into how, to, how, to, how to properly cast it with a torch. And we also have a uh, video online that shows exactly that. 
Uh, one uh, casting machine we, we found did not work was this uh, Neo Super Cascom. That's the, that's the electrical resistance one where it rolls over and does, a, does a, a, what's called a uh, argon pressure. Uh, some of those units are, don't have enough oomph in order to move this material because, again, the melting point is high and, and it sort of starts to solidify before the casting is complete. Uh, but we, we have been able to use the Bagel Nautilus and any of the induction units, uh, and the Cascom SE right now is being evaluated. Uh, we expect that that's going to be able to work uh, without any difficulty. Uh, we have a number of people using induction units, and as long as the induction unit has been kept well, uh, we don't have any difficulty. Uh, finishing, use non-contaminating aluminum oxide stones, and, and that goes really fast. Uh, the material finish is very easy, as you, as you saw. Okay, for preparing it for porcelain, uh, we always recommend you degas the material, uh, just heating it up uh, to 1010 C and, and bring it right back down again. They'll hold at temperature under vacuum. Under vacuum is important. That'll keep the oxide down and, uh, and uh, make it easier for you. And then sandblast. Sandblasting with like 50 micron aluminum oxide at two bar is fine. Uh, there, there's, no, there, there's no sensitivity there. So um, one of the things I wanted to note was on the degassing. Oh, and by the way, this is, a, this is available for you. Uh, just ask your salesperson, and we'll be able to provide this, uh, this little uh, cheat sheet for you. It has everything you need, uh, including the armamentarium. Okay. One thing, when you do do the uh, uh, opaquing, uh, we suggest you do two layers. Uh, the first layer should be a fairly thin layer and you overfire that by about 25 degrees just to make it nice and thin and glassy and you won't have any problems with uh, uh, bubbling, okay? Uh, using paste opaque, uh, we suggest you put it on a dryer for a few minutes until the paste opaque changes and gets chalky and again, that's just to make sure that all of the organics and the paste opaque has, has, uh, has left or else that alone will give you uh, uh, bubbling. Okay, any questions? Yes. Well, I showed a carbide there. You could use carbides or, or, or stones. Generally, using stones is going to be a little faster. Yeah. Yes. Okay, well, if Marlon was there, then, okay, we'll, 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 we'll talk, okay, we'll talk later. Okay, well, what, what, what investment are you using? Uh, I don't remember, but he said everything was doing this fine. Yeah. One of the things, one of the things that I always recommend, uh, I don't know if Marlon did, but um, uh, you could be following the instructions, uh, fine, for the, for the investment. But uh, for, for any heavy sections, we, I would always recommend you use a two-stage burnout. Uh, I know in, in a lot of cases you want to use the rapid burnout, you know, where you just put the unit in the furnace. And, and that, that's okay for small units, but when you have a thick section, uh, you really need to have that extra heat in, there, in that investment for a longer period of time. Uh, That's, that's correct, that's correct. So, so trying to do the rapid burnout it, it, for, for cases like that, you could be following the instructions correctly, but, but for something like that, you would, you would really wanna do a, a, a two-stage burnout. Take your time with it, let the investment get nice and hot, because again, the metal is gonna solidify uh, fast, and unless that investment is very hot and you have enough liquid in that, in that, in that, uh, in that mold, it, it, it's gonna give you porosity. Well, it's going to be dependent on the investment, but nothing less than 1500 at the top. I mean, 1500 1600 you know, that's good. Okay. 
Any other questions? I'm sorry? No, no, no. It's palladium free, silver free. Yeah. The crucible doesn't have to be at a certain temperature, but the crucible should be preheated at least 15 minutes before you're doing the casting. And, it, and again, that just minimizes the amount of oxidation you're going to get. You're always going to get a little bit of residue in, in the crucible, and you have to remove that after, before you do the next casting. Um, and it, 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 come, it should come out very easy. Uh, and, but you do have to, we always recommend you, reheat, you know, heat the crucible before you do the casting. Okay. Anything else? I, okay. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. Uh, we have some other alloys under development, uh, like a high noble one. And uh, we also have introduced a, a, a new um, uh, casting gold, uh, Argenco 40Y. We have examples of what it looks like in the case on the, on the right as you exit. And uh, that is less expensive than the 2% uh, gold alloys, uh, like the uh, Y plus or the uh, uh, AU2. So you may want to take a look at that just to save a little more dollars. Okay. Thank you for your time.